It's not very often that I get both excited about a topic and afraid to talk about that topic. And that is one we're going to talk about today. And I figure, you know what, we're going to make people mad. We might as well make everybody mad. Let's jump into it. Hi everybody, welcome back to the cabin. Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. I hope you guys are doing well out there. And like I said in the little pre-intro intro, we've got a topic and it is something that I saw in the Trash to Cash podcast reseller group, which is our podcast's reseller group, me and Dave, uh, ADH Dave and Carrie American Arbitrage. It's almost up to 40, it should be at 40,000 people by now, which is pretty amazing. So thank you for that. But it's a good one. I like it. Now, I don't agree with everything, and I don't like some of the back and forth, but as far as a lot of reseller groups go, it's a pretty good one. And this post came up the other day. It was a question. Kenneth, I'm stealing your question out there. What will the next big selling platform be? Or excuse me, will... Now, that's what it says. What will be the next big selling platform? So, whew, boy, quite a question right there. And I just started reading through the commentary and the answers to the question. And a lot of them I agreed with. A lot of them I disagreed with. A lot of them made me laugh. A lot of them made me think. And I really want to get into it and give you my opinion on it. But like anything, when I give you my opinion, there's going to be a lot of folks out there that agree, a lot of folks that disagree. I'm going to ask one thing, though, in advance, is to put aside your biases that you've already built up about all these platforms and think about it logically for a minute, because I have biases as well against some of these platforms, and a lot of them are personal biases just from my own preference and from what I see. But this question is looking into the future a little bit, but we're going to look back into the past and look at some of the critiques and talk about some of our critiques as well, positives and negatives of all of them, and ask ourselves the real question, is there something new on the horizon? Is there something that is fairly new that is growing? Is what not going to take over? Is eBay going to launch again and renew itself? Is eBay just buying the way it is? Is Poshmark good? Is Mercari the future? Is Etsy dying? Is Etsy alive? What's all this stuff about and where all this stuff is going? Let's go take a look. But as always, we have to do some work in here as well. We always pull orders and talk about a topic. So we're going to mix it all throughout the whole video today. And I know a lot of you love that about the show and a lot of you don't like that about the show, but... It is the show. That's what we do. It is a what sold on eBay show, or not even eBay anymore, but what sold anywhere. I think we got a couple cross listing sales today. Smashing Pumpkins, and that cassette tape sold for twelve dollars ninety five cents for shipping. That cassette is not sealed. If that was sealed, it would approach fifty to seventy five dollars, probably at least. Believe it or not. What will the next big selling platform be? I'm going to read some of these and then have some commentary about each one. The first one comes from Lexi. So Lexi, thanks for joining the Trash Cash Facebook group. That's very nice of you. But she just writes one word. The next big reselling platform, her word is eBay. <laughs> and it was meant to get a chuckle. It got a chuckle out of me, but it makes its point, right? In other words, eBay's still the big dog. eBay's not going anywhere. I know that wasn't the question, but it gives her mindset. It gives the mindset of a lot of folks out there. And I'll tell you this, if I had to choose one selling platform, just one, it undoubtedly would still be eBay. Will that be the case in five years? I don't know. But right now, that would be the case. At, at my heart, what I love to do the most is to sell on eBay. It's just the best for me. It has been for a long, long time. I'm very comfortable with it. Do I love everything about it? Do I think, you know, it's perfect? Do I think it's it's got the brightest future? Not necessarily. But it is, for right now, still the big dog. And I think she makes her point well. I would venture to guess that most of you out there are predominantly eBay sellers. There's a good portion of you that cross-list on multiple platforms. There's probably the exception that sells just maybe on Etsy or Mercari or something, but that's pretty rare, unless it is purely a hobby. I am, but you know what? I also suspect that most of you are pretty even-minded and you'll keep your eyes open just to, to kind of see what the trends are and what you're comfortable with and what you're comfortable doing. Sylvester and Tweety sold. And these are the talking ones, and they sold for $30 plus shipping. Sean gives an answer that I think in some ways is kind of interesting. He says, it depends on what you sell, and I think that is true. I think you're becoming, you're starting to see kind of specialty kind of things appear. We're going to talk about those a little bit later in the video, and I think they're important. 
but he also says collectibles is good on whatnot. And, you know, I don't know. I kind of agree with that, and I kind of don't agree with that, because I see a lot of people selling on whatnot. I guess we'll get into whatnot for a second here. I'll pull a few items and get into it, but I'll, I'll address this one here first. I think I see a ton of sellers in all kinds of categories. Clothing, brand new clothing, used clothing, vintage clothing, shoes, who just sell shoes or just sell clothing or just sell athletic clothing or just sell... I saw one the other day. I didn't watch it, Blue Ridge Mama, if you're watching. That was selling lingerie only. And I'm like, holy moly, you know. So I think that whatnot will work for just about any niche and then sometimes, rarely everything sellers and i think a lot of us are every everything sellers which is why a lot of us don't go sell over there now i do which is going to get into the next part of this question which is where it gets touchy right so the response was this and this is from jamie what's next they asked okay meaning whatnot's already here right i guess this wasn't the touchy part and i kind of get that whatnot's new but it's not new it's here it's established it's growing it's already here it is effective. Is it for everybody? Absolutely not. I want to talk about that. And that's the next comment here. Michelle says, only if you have a big social media presence. And I think that is mostly true in the everything, everything seller category. I think there are tons and tons of people who are extremely successful on whatnot, who grew their whatnot on whatnot. They didn't have a social media following. But I don't see any everything seller out there, with the exception of in the storage unit categories, who have grown their audience on whatnot organically, who are everything sellers. Most everybody over there is niched down. I'll talk about the three things I think you would need to have to make it to be a success over there on whatnot and to make it worth your while because it's not worth everybody's time. And I had a viewer sale. This is like a dual, well, there's two of them. So it's a Shrade knife right here. Really cool. Whenever you pick up, whenever you see Shrade, it's probably worth picking up if the price is pretty good. And they also bought some video games. It looks like a family bought this one. So a couple things for a few different folks if I can find this one. There it is. We don't know. Is that it? Hmm. What the heck is it? Call of Duty is what I'm looking for, y'all. Oh, right here. Call of Duty. And that one and the knife, and I don't know what went for what. I'm sure the knife went for far more. Went for $51.41 plus shipping. Yeah, the games went for 20, knife went for 30-ish, right around there. So hello, Kevin, we love watching your videos. We are repeat buyers here and subscribers. Can you please combine shipping? Sure, and sometimes I forget like I did on the last show and I had to go back and do it later. Keep up the amazing work, Joe, Billy Joe, Gavin, and Maddie. So thank you. Thank you to all of you. We appreciate you. And there's something right there, right? You know, you got to have a following to sell on whatnot. That is more true of whatnot than it is of eBay, of course, because I don't know what percentage go to viewers on whatnot it is way up there. 80%, right? Viewers, not just on whatnot, but of the channel. There's some folks who come in and buy because they like what we're selling that day, especially if we're niched down in there. But the great majority of buyers or viewers that have come over for the live auctions. Now, we have viewer sales on eBay, but they're usually around 20, like I say, 25% or so. And I'd also say that 90, 95, well, more than that, 99% of what I buy that I put on eBay would sell, even if it didn't sell to a viewer, it just would take a little longer. All right, this one should be in the racing bin. Is our one, another one of those Rolex hats right there. I think that's the right one with the pin. I'll have to double check, but these sold way better than I thought they would. When I picked them up, I'm like, yeah, we'll definitely get them. And I'm like, holy cow. I think this is the cheapest one, $24.95 plus shipping. And they are, most of them, maybe not this one, are numbered. Yeah, I don't think that one is numbered, but they're one out of whatever. And I don't see that on that hat, but still $24.95 plus shipping. And after all that, I had the wrong hat. There's the right one, $24.95 shipping so i guess my short answer for whatnot would be like you know if you do consider it new enough to be the next big thing then yeah for sure i think most of us already realize it's taken its place as part of reselling and a growing part of reselling that is appealing to a large group of people but not nearly as large as those people who want something and they want to go find it and they want to buy it this is an experiential buying process it's quite a bit different. I have not seen the massive growth in the static marketplace sales over there. And I personally, I don't think we will. So 
So I do have a sale. <laughs> this topic's not supposed to come up yet here. It's a cross-listing sale. This is over on Dibdit. This is my selling site over on District. And it's an ALF sale. And I had this video topic written down and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. I will save it for a little bit later. I'll give you an update on District on Dibdit.com. This ALF right here was part of a sale that I bought two things. I bought a bunch of Nancy Drew books and an ALF. And I paid way too much for them, but I just felt like I had to for some reason. I think the ALF sold for, what do I have written down here? I have $28.99 written down here. I don't know if that's the shipping included or not, but I bought that. She wanted $25 for it and I wasn't gonna pay 25 and she wanted 50 for these Nancy Drew books. And that was way too much. And I'm hoping if all goes well, I'm going to maybe, if everything goes perfectly, I'll make $50 profit. I paid 50 bucks for the books and the ALF. So I basically got the box of books if she threw in the ALF, basically, is what it was. And so I've made a pretty good chunk of my money back, but now I've got some Nancy Drews over there. I'm hoping for a couple of good ones, because there are a couple of good ones. I didn't even dig through it. But I knew that that amount of Nancy Drew books I could probably get $75 for. And so I figured 50 into 75 with a chance of finding a good one. What the heck? She seemed like a nice lady. I would really almost never pay $50 for $100 worth of merchandise, especially if one of them were a set of books. I would almost never do that. But I just, I don't know, there's something about that lady, and I didn't want to leave Alf there, and I'm like, I'm going to make money on it. Let's just do it. I just looked down at my list for my next sale, and we have a, a cross-listing sale of sorts right there. <laughs> and I have to skip down and read this one before I do the next sale, because Penny said, Bonanza. <laughs> and if you watch this show, that might make you chuckle because you don't get a lot of sales on Bonanza. But Penny says, big changes are coming. The platform is appealing. And Sh Sherry says, Bonanza, yeehaw, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And I know a lot of you sell on there like I do. And there has been changes, good changes in my opinion. There's new ownership and no, I do not own Bonanza. As many people out there say I do own Bonanza. I do not, I don't even own a portion of Bonanza. That's it, I do own some FedEx stock though that I probably need to sell, so. Any rate, this is funny because we have a Bonanza sale. And it's almost as funny as the sale itself. You know, I, I don't think it's a joke to say Bonanza because I think that's part of my overall answer to the question. Maybe that's what I'll get into next. Not that Bonanza is the next new selling platform. That's not what I'm sell saying. Although it's not a new selling platform and it is a selling platform, but it's not the next big thing. But it might play a role in it when you hear what I have to say. So this was my all-time worst buy as far as sell-through rate of all time. It's been years. And it would, they were 10 cents. I bought a whole bag for like 99 cents or something silly. These are Summer's Eve feminine body bars and they're travel size. And I, like I said, I bought a whole bag and we've made money on them off the very first sale. I think we've had three sales. So we still have some left. And of all places for this to sell, it's Bonanza, which is absolutely insane. $11.88 plus shipping. And I'm getting ahead of myself just a shade here because I really wanted to talk about the three facets I think that can work for some people, even though I'm not a huge whatnotter. And I want to talk about that still. But I've got to address this thing really quickly. So Bonanza is just a portion of this. Now, you can automatically up your, uh, upload your stuff to Bonanza just by connecting it to your eBay. And so they've somehow figured out a way that it gets all up there and then it gets delisted and all that stuff. I've only had one snafu ever over there but the sales are pretty slow but it does make me think about maybe there isn't ever going to be just one juggernaut out there like ebay and of course we're excluding amazon from this discussion so just keep that in mind i realize that's the biggest seller but it's not the traditional kind of reselling like most of us think so i would say that maybe there will never be a new eBay or the next best thing that, that has so much of a market share that eBay used to have. Now, eBay sales aren't really going down. They're pretty steady year after year. You see ups and downs and whatever. They're still doing massive volume, but it's not like this massive trajectory going up. So, and I don't see it ever going up because, not because eBay's failing, but because there are so many other options out there that are losing market share bit by bit. But just because you lose market share doesn't mean you're not selling as much as you used to. I think sometimes people 
most of the time people way overstated saying, you know, it's time to abandon ship on eBay or whatever selling platform you're on and get to the next best thing because still eBay is the best thing at this point. And maybe it is that there is no next best thing and cross listing is the way to go. And I think it is for some folks. I think everything sellers, that might be the case. For some folks, it might just be, what does your stuff that you typically sell, where does it sell best? And just sell there. Now I gotta find some DVDs. I don't normally sell this type of DVD stuff right here, but it was all Disney. And I'm like, you know what? That looks like a pretty good lot. Let's just put it all together. Somebody might buy it because of the titles in there. And Maleficent to the Nut Job, Pixar. I guess that's not Disney, is it? Is it? Up, Little Mermaid and the Incredibles. And they sold for 15 bucks. Is that what we got for these? 15.95 plus shipping. Let me clean up whatnot really quick, and then we'll move on to the other platforms that aren't new, but we'll talk about them, and we'll talk about some of these comments, and then look and see if there's something out there that we're not even thinking about yet. We'll get into district for a minute at the end of the video as well. So here's what I would say. Yes, it's absolutely beneficial if you have a social media following and you can move them all over there. I mean, I can give you a laundry list of people who have had success doing that. But it is not the only way. I just want to say that. You might hate it. You might look. Let's look at me, for instance. And you've, if you've been watching this channel long enough, you've seen my struggles and wavering back and forth about it. And what finally changed my mind about it, for me, in my situation, was I was going to continue to do my eBay business with the goal of growing my eBay business and then also do this on the side. And I love the decision so far. So what do I mean by do it on the side? I have my hands in every part of my eBay business. I am hands-on. I am the one that runs it. There's a few things that, that I have help with every once in a while. But the whatnot business is almost completely run by Jess and by Bubba's girlfriend. And my wife helps ship it every once in a while. My daughter helps with a little bit too. She's done some shows with me. But all I do is the sourcing and run the show. And that's it. I don't post items to the show. I don't ship items. I don't even curate the shows. I don't do any of it. And so I'm making a smaller margin because I'm paying two people to help me run those things. But I'm still making a margin and they're doing it and I'm still able to control my eBay business and do it the way I want. So for me, it works. It, it's kind of a way to maximize revenue without having to do all the work and stress of doing all of it. Now, is that for everybody? Of course, it's not for everybody. But it does work for me, and because of the social media following, it certainly is beneficial. But I can give you a laundry list of people that, that have built it over there without the social media following. And I've seen it time and time again. It just, it takes a special kind of, two, two things really, three things. It takes consistency and discipline. But in, along with that, in order to have consistency, you have to have a massive quantity of items to sell. Because you can run through 100 things in a show, 150 th things in a show. And that's not easy to come up with that. So and there's a smaller margin over there, sometimes a much smaller margin over there. So basically, consistency in two phases, doing shows and consistently sourcing very cheap merchandise that people want in those shows and doing it over and over and over again, and being niched down. I think all three of those things, combined with some kind of a, of a presence in order to run a show like that, and that's where I lack. I've gotten somewhat better at it, I suppose, but it's not my gig, right? But I've gotten a little bit better at it, and, and people are in there joining me and having fun. So if you don't want to do all those things, if you don't have all those things, it is not for everybody. And I'm also going to say this eBay's not going to die because of whatnot. It just plain and simply isn't. There will be certain things that are affected over there a little bit more, certain niches that are affected more, but whatnot will not take out eBay. It will not. At the same time, whatnot's going to continue to grow. You know, Amazon didn't stop eBay from growing, and eBay didn't stop Amazon from growing. And I think that's kind of the way these other platforms are going to come in. And to be honest with you, I think it's a net positive, all of this stuff. Competition in these platforms keeps them wondering how far they can push the fees, to be honest with you. And the, the next one's going to build the best system and 
maximize their profits while still encouraging resellers to sell. Samsung VCR, $42.75 plus shipping. Rich says Etsy, and of course it's not a new one at all. And then Meg comes back and forth here. Sorry if I'm using your names. I, I figured you put it out there in a massive Facebook group so you wouldn't care. And uh, who else in here? Meg says, longtime Etsy seller, the platform is dying. So it's certainly not the next big thing. I, I can't imagine that. But for certain different niches and stuff, there's still a lot of people that sell over there. Um, <laughs> Brendan says, MySpace. Which actually got me thinking a little bit, you know, reselling and the experience of reselling. What not added a new dimension? And of course, Dave mentioned AI the other day and mentioned uh, the, the Apple goggle thing that I know nothing about and how people are out there and they can literally experience the buying process with somebody possibly and buy in that experience. I asked Turner about his oculus thing and all the stuff he does i said are there advertisements popping up inside of there it wouldn't surprise me inside of those systems to see buying and selling as well and to have almost like virtual marketplaces that aren't terribly virtual they're actual actually real with multiple people doing trading in those places and then shipping the items i could see all that stuff coming down the road and i think that's a big part of it it makes my mind want to explode and makes me want to hold on to my old school reselling but at the same time, uh-oh, time put out of the trash. Let me finish that comment up. So there are things out there on the horizon that we just can't wrap our brains around yet. But I don't think there's anything out there right now. With one exception, I'm going to talk about District in just a second. Talk about Divdit, our own District. And I think that they are making a play in a slightly different way than, say, Whatnot is and eBay is. That it is, I think got a chance and in some places in some ways it's really succeeding already in some ways it's not quite there yet and jared said mercari which of course is not new either but you know i don't know mercari is i here's my prediction for mercari i think it's going to continue to grow and the growth rate is going to outpace ebay's but it has to do that for a long long time just to catch up so i don't i don't really see you know, it being like one day everybody thinks when well, I gotta buy something, let's go to Mercari. I, I I just don't see it. Maybe I'm wrong. It says in a Liberty University lanyard. It's been in there forever. Four seventy five plus shipping. Chad says parking lots. <laughs> and let me tell you, if all these lawsuits and taxation issues and all the other stuff keep going, he might be right. <laughs> I'd hate for our country to ever get to that point where we have so much of a struggle to resell things with all the red tape and the threats of lawsuits and all the other nonsense that would relegate us to doing that kind of stuff. But, you know, that stuff's still pretty big. I know people who make a living just selling at flea markets. I know quite a few of them. Whew, that was a heavy box. It's going to take me a minute to find this one. It took me about three seconds, not nearly as long as it would take me if they were all in this giant thing over here. Patagonia hat. Waited for a while, but it sold. Little vintage Patagonia. $30 plus shipping. You know, I'm old enough to remember when everybody, I say that tongue in cheek, cheek, because it wasn't that long ago when everybody said, hey, Facebook Marketplace is the place to sell. And I don't mean local Facebook Marketplace. I mean shipping it on Facebook. And I tried it for a little while, made a couple sales, hated it. Now it's pretty much non-existent. I don't hear anybody talking about shipping on Facebook. Now they still do it, but I don't hear much about it. And that is Facebook for goodness sake. There's a lot more that goes into it and I don't think that is the direction. However, I think that platforms that can integrate Facebook in some way, shape or form, which you've seen, you've seen me on Facebook selling on whatnot. I gotta find an extra small, that's a small, this might take a minute. All right, that's the fourth belt I pulled out right there. The extra small Harley belt. I sold for $30 plus shipping. Sold a pair of American Eagle jeans. I'm going to have to dig those out of our bins. We've been listing a lot of jeans lately, which I've kind of given up on. But man, we've been listing them. They've been selling. It makes me think of a niche down effect. You know, there are other places we haven't talked about. You know, there's the Depops of the world and there's the Grails of the world. And there's a whole slew of other selling sites that are just a little bit different and specialize in a particular audience. I think that could be a play as well. But most of us don't want to deal with that stuff. You want to have one place you can go to. And, uh, well, I'll get back to this part in a second. The reason I say I'll get back to it is because there is one company making a play for the niche down markets 
with a, with an appeal to sellers that doesn't require the multi listings on different places. And I'll get to that in a second. But this is American Eagle 38, 36 pair of jeans. I bought a ton of these for two dollars a piece, and I'm like, I'll never list them. But we are. And they're in good shape, and they sold for $24.95 plus shipping. I've got to pull a few more items here, but while I'm doing that, leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts so far, and then I'm going to get into the last topic of the day at the end. Same topic, but the future of reselling and the next best thing here. Barney, this one sold to a viewer. I don't know what it sold for, though. It sold for $21 plus shipping. It's been sitting up there for a while. Now I have to find a replacement. Maybe Winnie the Pooh should go up there. I don't know. Seems like he'd fit. Maybe, I, I don't know. I need a replacement for Alf right there, too. So let me read that comment. By the way, some vintage Barneys do really well, and some of them don't do so well. I thought that one would do really well. And then I looked it up, and the comps were like, eh, maybe not so much. But it's still sold, so for $21 plus shipping for my boyfriend, Joe Mar, who has had his eye on this for quite some time. A very sentimental thing for him, so I'm so excited to see his face. This is your first purchase on ebay caitlin first one that i see anyways so thank you for joining us over on ebay do a lot more shopping over here let me tell you you can find some good deals and all of us resellers appreciate it when new buyers come over so we, we thank you very much i hope he enjoys barney kind of a crazy day not one dog not one cat nothing no children no nothing in here i feel all alone they're here they're just not coming down harley davidson small or extra small nylon chaps 34.95 plus shipping had to go back inside again aaron Rodgers 3xl green bay packers nike jersey this one's not embroidered still sold for 29.99 plus shipping two more items and we'll get to the summary of this thing and i'd love to hear your opinion on it but this one right here see this is the kind of thing right that just convinces me ebay will never die well i shouldn't say never it will die eventually but it's going to hold on for a long time because you know you're not buying an nsa bacteriostatic water filter on depop or you know i mean i suppose you could buy it on some of these places but you're more likely going to look for something like this on ebay nobody's going to go to whatnot looking for this thing right here so, and this was in my death pile forever i bought it super cheap from some nice folks raising some money and we gave him a little extra and it still sold for good money $74.95 plus shipping this one was a viewer sale i picked it up from the records down there and this came in that box if you remember that video we did where we traded that guitar for a box from mojo dojo and the rest of that stuff's over there on whatnot and we're going to sell it all off together high-end stuff not just you know stuff i don't want to list on ebay we're selling it all off and there's hundred dollar t-shirts in there plus and some amazing stuff as well but we decided we put the records here over here on ebay and this one interview with bruce springsteen so and the reason we do that is because media mail you can't mix it into a sale that doesn't have media mail because they combine shipping over there so we decided to do that this one went to abc matt 14.95 plus shipping if you don't know matt he's a terrific guy abc matt he is uh, on youtube you can go check out his youtube channel and he's just a super awesome guy he says hi kevin it's abc matt just doing my part to help out where i can you do a bunch you don't have to you don't need to do anything but we appreciate you all the time a question i want to ask is how much how many sales do carrie and dave get on whatnot or if you omit whatnot how many sales do they get the mindset must be different sourcing when you can fall back on whatnot to sell items so without a doubt and i still am in ebay source mode but occasionally when i'm out there i'm like you know what this is the kind of thing that would do do well over there and i'll pick it up and a lot of my whatnot sourcing i don't do when i'm out on doing garage sale picking because i still like to go out thinking with the mindset of i'm going to sell this on ebay and I'd like to up my game as far as stuff over there and whatnot. Not selling off $10 items, but selling off $20, $30, $50, $100 items that might be just a little bit different than I'm doing in here, but at the same time might be the same. And putting bulk lots together that have value for resellers, doing one-offs that people like to buy that they collect, just all kinds of different things. But still not only maintaining my eBay store, but growing it. But I guess your question isn't about me. It's about Dave and Carrie. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know their numbers enough to tell you. I know Dave's a little bit more than Carrie's. I don't think me and Carrie have ever had that conversation. Um, so I'll tell you that Dave is more than happy to tell you. And I believe, 
Don't don't take my word for this, but I believe Dave sells about as much on whatnot as he does on eBay. And that number is is lower. It's his whatnot number is way higher than mine. His eBay number is lower than mine. I don't know. I'm gonna say maybe a third less than mine, maybe 40% less than a mine on eBay is my guess. And I just would, there's a lot of work that goes into whatnot, a lot of it. And he's got energy that apparently I don't have. So at any rate, I'm sure he'll tell you over there. So thanks for the question and I hope you enjoy the record. Back to the Facebook post here. Brian says, as far as new up and coming reselling platforms, Brian says district. Joe's response is, I know they want it to be, but I'm not seeing it. And then back to Brian, he says, it's growing. It's still very a fairly new platform. It's actually a very new platform. We are planning on opening our own marketplace on there this week, and we'll try to get it to grow as well. Not so many add-on fees as eBay. So I can talk about this forever. I can make a dedicated video about it to educate people about it, I suppose. I'm I'm in the... I don't know how I want how how I want to frame this because I don't obviously I'm over on district. I have my own site on district, me and Dave and Carrie, dibdit.com. So I don't want to come off as, as selling this because it's it's part of a, a real question here. So I guess I'll advocate for it in the ways that I think it deserves advocating for. And in some ways I'll just tell it like it is. And in that same mindset right there. You know, I've been paid by whatnot to do inclusion ads from time to time, and you've seen those, and you'll probably see a few more. So, you know, but I, I'm trying not to let that color my judgment of this stuff. I'm not paid a dime by eBay, but I'm sitting here telling you that if you want to start this thing off and you want to sell stuff, this is the place to go. But at the same time, looking towards the future a little bit. And Brendan said, or Brendan, I'm looking at him, Nancy says, knickknacks, and that's, of course, one of the marketplaces over there on District. And Barb says 15,000 members, question mark, which to me is amazing for something so new and so niche down to have 15,000 members is pretty darn good. And with 15,000 members, you're starting to see sales, a lot of sales, big numbers. And it's just not Jocelyn. She's the one who's grown this thing. And she's obviously had help, but it's been her. She's been the driving factor. And if she can push 15,000 people in just a matter of five months, you know, look at that two years from now and think what are the possibilities for a niche down marketplace, but at the same time in a bigger marketplace. And that's where I think that people, that's where I think the intrigue is, at least it is for me, where you can sell in these niche down marketplaces, which aren't big enough yet. Don't get me wrong. It's not there yet. They don't even have an Android app, but it is growing. And she has proven that it can work because it's working like crazy right now. There's live sales over there all the time, two, three a day. Soon it'll be, you know, maybe 30, 40 live sales a week. And then it'll keep growing off of one little marketplace that's dedicated little to one particular thing. I'm going to sell over there. I'm going to sell over there in May. I'm going to sell glass. I figured, you know what, if I'm going to sell glass, I'm going to find the best place to sell it because I don't sell glass. And I've sold some on eBay, but I'm going to sell some over there as well. It's a niche down marketplace. But the beauty of district, in my opinion, is that you can be a seller in there. And then as you're listing an item, just pick which marketplace is best for it. And are you going to get sales? Maybe not yet. There's We had two sales yesterday, totaled over $200 as a static sale. But we don't have static sales every day, buy it now sales. We do have them come in sporadically, but we don't have a ton of them. I'm sure not nearly as many as them, but there are sales live. I'm going to go over the numbers here in just a second, but I do think that their model is intriguing. They're not there yet, but it is very intriguing to me because it's a model that nobody else is doing. I went to go click on our numbers because I can talk a little bit about dibdit.com and give you a realistic approach, not approach, but just insight into how it's going so far and where we think it can go. And they just launched a marketplace that's called the Swifty Vault. A Taylor Swift community and merch marketplace hosted by a fun-loving group of Swifties, the Swifty Vault. So you can see what I mean by niche down. And if you can grow that community, which, I mean, good Lord, there's a lot of people out there like that, right? And if you're a seller and once you get into district, you get approved on all these different things. All these things come through. It's not like you're cross-posting. You're just posting it once and putting it in the right marketplace. And if a sale happens, it all comes back to a hub. It's just like listing in one location. It's not that you're listing in all of these locations. It's all done 
on the back end like it's one single marketplace. So I'll just give you a little picture. I think that's what's interesting about it. It's like on whatnot, you know, you might need to sell in this niche and in these categories, but you can sell in other categories. The difference here is there's community built around it and there's other things that go with it. And your audience, even though it might be small, like they said, 15,000, like that's growing, like that's a question mark, but it's 15,000 people who love glass. That's a lot of eyeballs on glass. So you don't need a massive community. You need an, a community of people who want to buy your stuff. Yeah, there's millions and millions of buyers on eBay, but how many of them buy, you know, what you sell? So I think that's an interesting part of it. But we are at 2,000, we're about 2,400 members, okay? A little less than 500 sellers. By the time you see this video, it'll go up. We've been approving more and more sellers. Members have been coming in slowly but surely. I think we're the fourth biggest marketplace over there right now. Um, let me look at the numbers for sales so far. And again, this is not meant to sell anything. If you guys love the things me and Dave and Carrie love, I'd love you to come over and become a member. We're getting through the applications way more quickly. You know, it's there's not going to be a ton of sales. So, so far we've eclipsed $22,000 this year so far, which is, you know, nothing amazing. But it is growing and it's getting to be more and more and more slowly but surely. And I, I hope that continues to grow because I enjoy this because there's a community aspect to it and it's niched down to some degree into the things that we like, pop culture type stuff, vintage nostalgia, the kind of stuff like you'll find on this shelf right here, to be honest with you. And the static sales, the buy it nows are not massive by any stretch of the imagination, but there are more and more people going live, more and more deals to be find, found. I buy a lot over there, to be perfectly honest with you. And I've made a commitment to myself, actually, I wasn't going to say this, but I guess I'll say it, because I make 1.67% of every sale. They don't pay me to do anything over there. I haven't taken any money. I just love the idea of something new and something different that I can dabble with and have fun with. And this just meets those needs. It's like, for those of you who don't know anything about it, it's kind of like a a mix between eBay and whatnot and Discord and a Facebook group all in one. And I think over time, it, it's already taken off for Crazy Lamp Lady. And, and she's a smart, smart lady, for sure. So, And there's a lot of people who are going live consistently over there and tapping into her audience, their audience at this point, the whole marketplace's audience, and doing pretty well. And it's only going to get better. And we're still struggling along, you know, kind of getting this thing going. But at some point, at some point, I think that I will be over there selling live far more than I am right now. Right now, I'm selling over there live with things that are a little bigger. You can control shipping much, much easier. You, you won't just lose money on shipping like you do. You can't make money on shipping on whatnot. They make all the money on the shipping. But you can strategically get it to a point where you're not losing money you're even making some money in shipping and still giving out good deals for people in shipping with bigger items which you can't do very easily over there on whatnot either it's much more like ebay in that way you can control your shipping and you have options but boy now i'm getting off into details what else can i tell you here so you know a, a portion of those sales are mine i think i've sold uh, a little over three thousand dollars worth of stuff over there just doing two lives and and selling a bunch of stuff from time to time over there on that site so i've been pretty happy with it i'm going to do a console sale they're big and if you do combined shipping you could be losing 20 dollars to ship something which is crazy to me so any rate you know i've made a commitment this year because of the money i'm making dave and carrie haven't made this commitment they don't even know i'm making this commitment but every dime i make this year off of that website i'm going to turn it right back into that website and i'm going to buy from the people who are over there and that's going to be my practice in the near future maybe i'll do that next year too but i'm going to do it this year i've already spent more over there than i've made and whatever i make because it shows you whatever you make and as soon as i get that i won't cash it out i'll spend it on stuff that i want for me for that ebay cave in there that i still have plans on redoing a year and a half after i said it all right maybe i've left you with more questions than answers but that was kind of the point i wanted to get people thinking about this kind of stuff and sharpening their own minds about it and their own arguments about it without getting too touchy and so emotional like people get when we talk about these different platforms which people like and dislike for different reasons and i like and di dislike for different reasons so at any rate, I think it's a fun topic. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see. Time will tell, I suppose. But in the meantime, I hope your sales are going well. 
I appreciate you joining us and I can't wait to see you next time.